And so now to the moment we have been waiting for. First of all, to the Ford Foundation, thank you for supporting 2020 Bowl Leadership and, and our efforts to celebrate this amazing Head Start field. Darren Walker, president of the foundation, is a proud Head Start alumnus and a forever Head Start champion. We have no bigger champion than him. At Ford, he's boldly leading the country's philanthropic community toward recognizing the pervasive impact that racism and racial inequality have had and to shift funding to boldly change systems, cultures, and behaviors. Darren is Head Start's honorary 2020 Bold alumnus, and he's here today to introduce you to the 2020 Bold alumni and then reveal the prize winners, the 2020 Bold Leadership Prize winner. Darren, thank you, thank you. The room is yours. Thank you so much, Yasmina. Let me first congratulate you and everyone, the leaders of the National Head Start Program, a crown jewel in President Johnson's war on poverty that continues to transform the lives of millions of young people in this country and is modeled around the world. I know this firsthand because I was a Head Start baby. In fact, in 1965, I lived in a small town, Ames, Texas, population 1,200. We lived in a little shotgun house on a dirt road, but a woman appeared on that spring day and she told my mother about a new program that President Johnson was initiating and that the summer of 1965 would be the inaugural class. I was blessed to be in that inaugural class and know that Head Start played a role in my life and made it possible for me today to be president of the Ford Foundation. At the Ford Foundation, education, human rights, civil rights are our core work opportunity and hope is what we are about. Those values, those aspirations align with the work that all of you do on the front lines leading Head Start programs. Today's announcement is something I have looked forward to, an opportunity to recognize the courageous and bold leaders among you. But as Yasmina said, Every one of you is doing path-breaking work. And I know I speak for the legions of Head Start alumni, students, parents, and families, and thanking you. Before we proceed, I want to acknowledge the selection committee of Head Start alumni for the Bold Awards. First, Dr. Anthony Abraham Jack, a junior fellow at the Harvard Society of Fellows and an assistant professor at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Second, Ilyaskia, the executive director of Gideon's Promise, an Atlanta-based nonprofit that works nationally to transform the criminal justice system by building a movement of public defenders who provide equal justice for marginalized communities. David Medina, CEO and co-founder of Results for America, an organization that helps decision makers harness the power of evidence and data to solve the great challenges before us. Dr. Joseph I. Castro, Chancellor of California State University, a bold leader in his own right. He is the first Californian and first person of color to serve in this critically important role. And finally, Omar Woodard. Executive Director for the Greenlight Fund of Philadelphia, a longtime colleague in philanthropy. Omar is building a, a bold organization as he transforms the lives of children and families in low-income urban areas. Thank you all, you bold alumni. So now let's proceed to talk about and announce the 2020 Bold Leadership Prizes. About a week ago, after reflecting on the amazing prize submissions, the National Head Start Association generously expanded the pool of winners to celebrate and reward even more of you. 
there still is one grand $10,000 prize, $10, prize winner, the 2020 Bold Leader Prize, but there will also be four Bold Game Changer Prizes. However, there were to be, but however, there was a three-way tie. So we're going to have six $5,000 winners. And finally, the National Head Start Association has a new category, the Bold Thinkers. And there are seven winners of this award at $1,000 each. So a reminder that the winners were selected in a blind process. There were no names or identifying information. Let me now introduce you to the 2020 Bold Thinkers Award winners. Beginning with Christina Badikian of Acelero Learning Head Start in Clark County, Las Vegas, Nevada. Elizabeth D. Camelia of Pasco County Head Start, early, early Head Start in Land Lakes, Florida. Deb Hendricks of Marion Community Schools Head Start, Marion, Indiana. Lori Hopper of South Central Human Resource Agency Head Start and Early Head Start in Fayetteville, Tennessee. Macy Jones of Alexander County Head Start in Taylorsville, North Carolina. Maria McNair of Lutheran Services of Florida, the Duval Head Start and Early Head Start program in Jacksonville, Florida. And finally, Jessica Moore of Wayne Metropolitan Community Action Agency in Highland Park, Michigan. Congratulations to each and every one of the 2020 Bold Thinker Award winners. And now, the six recipients of the 2020 Bold Game Changer Prize. First, Willing Chin of Grand Street Settlement in New York City. Stacy Lewis of Three to Five, Community Action Partnership of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Melissa McPheeters of Franklin Pierce Early Learning Center Head Start in Parkland, Washington. Nicole Lee Mensing of Community Action Partnership of Ramsey and Washington Counties in St. Paul, Minnesota. Alina Vega of Vista Del Mar of Home Safe in Los Angeles, and Anat Vesefrand of Community Action Pioneer Valley Head Start and Early Learning Programs in Northampton, Massachusetts. Congratulations to the 2020 Bold Game Changer Prize winners. And now, it is my great honor and privilege to announce the 2020 Bold leader. Her name is Maggie Evans, and Maggie Evans is the executive director of Agribusiness Child Development, providing early childhood education and social services to farm worker and other eligible families across the state of New York. In Maggie's submission, she said these words. I have learned to recognize when to be cautious and when to be audacious. I know we need more leaders like Maggie Evans, and I am eager to hear from her. Please join me in welcoming the 2020 Bold Leader Award winner, Maggie Evans. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Maggie, this is so exciting for all of us. The, this award is such a recognition. I think all of the folks I have just announced uh, are deserving. They're doing amazing work. But Maggie, this has been a particularly challenging time. You have led a statewide program. You have led during a time that is unprecedented. We have never, certainly in our lifetimes, but probably in the last century, 
experienced what we have experienced. And yet leaders of Head Start programs across this country have been the backbone of the education systems and provided with courage and wisdom and boldness, the leadership, the civic engagement, the representation that ought to make us all proud. And you in particular have personified the very best of Head Start, Maggie. So tell us, what is the takeaway that you have learned this year from your programs that give you hope and help you to believe in the future? Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Walker. What a, uh, an honor and a privilege to be talking uh, directly with you. Um, thank you to the Ford Foundation, obviously, for lending uh, you to us this afternoon. I, I do want to just, if I could, first thank the National Head Start Association for, I, I don't know, it's a beautiful and amazing award. It, it really is. And I think um, uh, through Yasmina's uh, leadership over the last decade, you know, the association has really done a wonderful job of showcasing Head Start programs. And I'm just really grateful for this. Um, this one more recognition that the association is giving um, Head Start programs throughout the country. Um, I, I want to congratulate the, the 328 nominees. I think it speaks volumes that someone in your world nominated you um, and obviously care about you and respect you. And I, I think it's a, a fabulous tribute to all of you. I, I certainly want to congratulate the the bronze and silver winners as well. You know, I, I think, but for a few words in one's application, um, you all could be sitting in this chair, quite frankly. So um, I, I thank you. And I'm, I'm so incredibly proud of the work that agribusiness child development does um, to, to, that has allowed me to be bestowed with this really wonderful award. I. I wanna just give my comments context for one second and explain who we are as an agency. Um, uh, you know, Agribusiness Child Development has been around for 75 years. Um, we're also known as ABCD as our acronym. Um, we are the sole provider of migrant and seasonal Head Start services in New York State. Um, so we, we work with the agricultural community and um, you know, for eligibility purposes, our families uh, have to be working in ag, both parents are, should be working and 51% of their income comes from agricultural work. Um, and these are the families that we have served over this last year. And it's, um, it's their work that has inspired us to roll up our sleeves and um, deal head on with this pandemic. Um, we also have a Seneca County Head Start, a regular Head Start program and uh, an early Head Start program in Orange County as well. But these are all essential workers we're serving, right? Whether it's um, farm working families in migrant and seasonal Head Start or um, frontline staff in hospitals that regular Head Starts are serving or um, American uh, uh, Indian, Native, Alaskan Head Start programs, we are serving essential workers. So I, I think the question is, how could we not be providing these services despite, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that pand this pandemic? I think every day since mid-March when New York shut down and we chose, and it was an extremely difficult decision to make to close down our program in a physical sense, um, but we immediately, immediately within days moved to virtual services um, because we knew our families, uh, even prior to the pandemic, are isolated. They are, um, uh, you know, uh, culturally, uh, and linguistically uh, challenged in the greater society, right? Um, immigration reform or that, the lack thereof has really made these a vulnerable population. And 
And so to remain connected was instrumental to us. And really um, we did everything possible to assess where families were. I think our work for the last couple of years in diversity, equity, and inclusion kind of laid the foundation for us to really meet this pandemic head on. We really, um, uh, we sent out surveys to parents and staff to assess their capacity from a technological standpoint. Um, we, and so, and then we provided the resources for them to be able to remain engaged because of that isolation piece. We did not want to uh, break that bond that our agency has with our farm working families and uh, other rural um, uh, financially strapped families. Um, that allowed us to meet those families' needs on a very individual basis. It gave us insight into, greater insight into their home lives and what they were challenged with. It allowed us um, to provide those one-on-one -on -one family engagement services. So there were silver linings across the board here. Um, some of the challenges we met head on were specifically for, for instance, children with disabilities. Providers were no longer providing uh, early intervention services, uh, but they were virtually in the very rural countryside where our programs are located. There isn't a lot of connectivity. We allocated and reallocated resources to those families. I didn't know where the money was coming from, but we, we made that leap of faith that if we were gonna be true to our mission and really um, strongly believe in the work that we were due, we're gonna make it happen no matter what. Um, so it was through all those um, collective efforts on the part of the board that would say yes to um, some of our unconventional requests um, and our, for our own frontline staff, who are the essential workers that are putting themselves in that line of fire of a pandemic so that they could support those essential workers. Um, it, it was our community partners, uh, Foundation for Farm Workers, um, uh, Justice for Migrant Women, um, Qualitas of Life Foundation, the Mexican Consulate. It was amazing the outpouring that came um, to help us do exactly what we needed to do. So it was a collective effort. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, the silver linings that we pulled out of that, we're going to carry forward in an effort to support our staff. Another, I thought, a bold decision in order for staff to remain employed when they had school-aged children at home, we opened up school-aged classrooms in, in our centers that had never done school-aged programming before. Again, we weren't sure where the money was going to come from, but it was the right thing to do to support our own essential workers. So it's been a year of learning, of, of uh, challenges, of tension, anxiety, but I would say to the Head Start world, we are so much um, the better for it. And I'm, I'm gonna reiterate what Yasmina said, we should be the model. You know, we figured this out last April, last May on how to do this. School districts are still struggling on how to make this work. And yet they should be looking to us as the model of, of what to do, how to roll up your sleeves and make it work. We did it with family engagement for the last 50 years. I think we should be a model for all school districts and other care and learnings about that family engagement piece, let alone how to move through a pandemic. So I, I'm honored, I'm thrilled. I, I can't thank you all enough. Again, any one of the thousands of Head Start staff that are leading the cause and out there on the front lines should be sitting here and, and being bestowed with this honor. And I, I do thank you very much. Well. Maggie Evans, it is clear that you represent the very best of Head Start, that you understand and live by the motto that Head Start is not a job. It's a calling. It's something you are called to do. It is a noble public service. 
It is a selfless task because you are often on the front lines without the recognition, without the financial remuneration, without uh, the spotlight, um, and yet you persevere, persist with determination and courage to serve these assets, these young people who are in need of what you have to give. I want to thank you on behalf of the National Head Start Association, the Ford Foundation, and everyone who cares in this country about the plight of young people, and particularly vulnerable young people, people from our cities, people who live in rural areas, and of course, migrant communities who are vital essential, not only to our economy, but to our civic fabric. Congratulations, Maggie Evans. You have made us all proud and you are most certainly the rightful recipient of the 2020 Bold Award. Thank you so much.